Okay, this is Sir Leo the Third with uh, Twenty Foot Angels, and this is the first iteration of whichever volume of RP School we're gonna call this, Volume Two. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, uh, and what this particular episode is about is how to start a character. Um, this is a pretty common question that the mods get about just uh, character creation in general. Um, it, and it's uh, kind of a hard question to answer because everyone has their own way that they come at uh, character creation. So what we're going to talk about in this episode are the kind of things that you should be thinking about and um, doing before your character, or before you even open up your character sheet. Uh, what we're looking for specifically is your character should feel like a person to you so that when you add numbers, you're describing someone, not creating someone at that point. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, from there, uh, where do you think we should start this, Tifa? <laughs> um, I think that there are three main things that you should really think about before you go, and they kind of all team up together like playing rock, paper, scissors, and one of them each goes into the other. And there are three kind of things that I think are really important. It's the archetype and the backstory and the personality. So the archetype would be like how so you pick an archetype for your character, like a lancer or a bard or a warrior or an axe person or a gunslinger, and you think, how would that kind of person end up at Beacon, which is a huntsman school? And you think about um, what kind of uh, situations would lead that kind of character or trope or archetype or however you want to see it to wind up at Beacon. And you see in Ruby that there's this huge variety of things we have, but each one of them has a reason to wind up at Beacon Academy. And that's uh, something that you really need to keep a focus on because you can do basically anything, but they need a reason. And that ties into your backstory. And backstory is another major, major thing that we're going to be talking about later on. And what you have to ask is, how would someone get to Beacon from this upbringing? So the backstory ties into everything else and give, brings you there. So how would someone from this backstory wind up there? And that's kind of how the events that uh, your character goes through and the people that shape them the type of uh, history that would bring your character there. And the final thing is personality, and that ties into the backstory and the archetype. And the three of them all work together. And what would drive that kind of person to be a warrior? And you can have all kinds of personalities, huntsmen come from all walks of life, but what would uh, cause someone with this type of uh, motivations, morals, goals, dreams, what would cause that kind of person to want a, to be a warrior? What kind of warrior would they become? Is all defined by uh, their backstory and their personality really comes into that. And I think personality is one of the first things that we could talk about, Leo. Yeah. Um... One of the really important things is your, because again, this is a very early stage for your character. And so a good question to ask yourself is what kind of person do you even want to play? Um, you Maybe you like, uh, you want to play kind of a, a stoic who uh, is quiet and calm e e even in the worst of circumstances. Um, and you, you just start with that. And one of the things when you start with the personality like that that you need to consider is that when you finish with however you're considering describing that person through their life journey, their backstory, that none of that should seem out of place. Uh, basically, uh, even though you're starting with the backstory, when you're writing it, it should feel like the or were you starting with the personality when you write it, it should feel like everything about that person's personality is coming out in their backstory. Now you don't have to have all of that down completely when you describe when you're first starting out, but it is when you're thinking about when you're thinking about the general themes of your person's backstory, that is something that you should be considering. Um, and uh, a good, um, the thing there is to even think about what would be out of character for this person. Um, what is what is this? What isn't this person? Um, 
uh, one of the things uh, both uh, me and Tifa will occasionally be uh, referencing through these videos is um, some OCs that we've been uh, kind of working up and um, work in progress yes we're th these are very work in progress um i know i have literally not statted out this person at all this, this person's literally just a thing in my head right now and, same with my example okay good i i thought so i just didn't want to speak for you <laughs> i kind of restarted her this week whoopsies <laughs> i i wonder why i had no clue why that might be um <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, a good thing so for my example uh, my person really started with uh, me wanting to play a steampunk character especially after that last episode of season four where they confirmed very steampunk looking airships um and so <laughs> i know it's really cool um and so when i was thinking about the character archetype that i wanted to play I, uh, the, and the personality that I wanted to work with, which really was after steampunk, which is just an aesthetic, I went immediately to personality, and for that I wanted to play an inventor. Uh, and so I started looking up references. We'll talk more about references later, so I'll, I'll dive more into that there. But none of that has to do with even necessarily how that person fights, but it is going to influence all of that. And then I also have to consider where that person's going to come from that makes that make sense we already like mistral's an easy answer because we already know that aesthetic works there uh and so just starting with what kind of person i want to play i want to play a steampunk inventor gave so me that would be the archetype yeah that would be that archetype that we talked about but it already gives me some of that personality and it's in and it's a very simple thing and now i can branch out of that and uh, one of the important things when you're talking about branching out is you do want your character to be grounded in, um, uh, uh, you want your character to be grounded in the world of Remnant. So I already mentioned that they're from Mistral, but really, you know, steampunk could be like almost any universe. So you, you find some way to ground them. Um, one of the things that you should consider is if your person's going to be a faunus, if you, if you want to take that Tifa. Yeah, one of the things. Um, oh, one thing I want to bring up before we go on to personality. Make sure that your character has a personality that's compatible with you. And don't make your character with traits that you can't tolerate or playing with them will be a chore and you'll hate it. And so make sure to make a character with a personality that you can enjoy. Oh, but one thing I'm going to do and we're going to move. Uh, move. Blech, yeah. Faunus. Okay, so we were going to talk about Faunus. Whoopsies. Being a faunus is a special case and because they are a minority character and a minority character type and so that has some special things that come with it. So if they are a faunus, what does that mean for their character and does it have a special meaning to them? Do they accept it? Do they shun it? Um, and how does being their faunus type, just as for their species type, and just being a racial minority itself influence their life and their history, their personality, and their outlooks on the world? Um, being a faunus as shown in the show is something that comes with special unique challenges and we absolutely encourage faunus characters in our rp and we really really like it when people do cool stuff with it we're always excited to see people take things in a really interesting direction but it's always good to keep in mind that it does come with some special things and it's always a good idea to keep an eye out for them um, other things include, uh, do they have any faunus role models in their life where having one can be a good thing, but not having them has its own challenges. And if they have uh, role models in their life, are they a uh, good influence or a bad influence? And what do they think about those role models? And, you know, influences apply to any character, human or faunus, but uh, when you're playing a character from, uh, from a specific standpoint, they tend to turn to people who are like them. So are they good or bad influences in their life? And how did that help shape them? And I think that's a good thing to keep an eye on. And I think another even good thing there is, you no, know, not everyone's going to be playing a Faunus character. and yeah. But everyone is going to be playing a character that Faunus are in that world. And mm -hmm. they aren't the racial minority that like uh, where you're not going to have any interactions with them or have at least known no know, known some or known of some maybe if you live in some place that's very remote and maybe just does not have a lot of faunuses there but 
how your character would interact with people who aren't like them from both sides of that equation is yeah. a very interesting question that you should probably have an answer to. Exactly. Okay. Right. Um, so we're going to move on. We were talking, we mentioned archetype. And when Tifa actually gave uh, examples of archetype, she gave a lot of combat examples. Um, yeah, yeah. Which... Uh, for other RPs, I, I might have jumped in there and gone like, whoa, 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 we don't need to have combat. And you, your archetype doesn't need to necessarily start with a, a combat thing. As I said, inventor isn't necessarily a combat thing, and that's the archetype that I'm going for with, with my character. But every character that we play in this RP is a warrior of some kind. They chose to come to Beacon to train in combat, and they are not just... Not just as cops, not just as soldiers, even though cop and soldier are archetypes that you could totally play with with this. But your person came and sought out an education on how to slay monsters. And that should, and how they choose to do that should work with their overall story, their overall archetype. Um, yeah, I could have an inventor who just has a giant, um, you know, sledgehammer and hits things with a sledgehammer. And you can go like, well, you know, it's an inventing thing because it's, you know, hitting someone with a tool. But that doesn't really say anything about their personality. Um, other than maybe that they like destruction. I mean, so you, like, even as I just said, that doesn't say anything about their personality. I found a way to make that say something about their personality. The choices you make about their fighting style go in that same rock, paper, scissors thing that Tifa mentioned with their personality, with their backstory, with all of that stuff. All of that should feel like a cohesive whole. So it's something you should be thinking about. And some of that is going to go back to the same thing that, that again, Tifa mentioned about playing somebody that you're going to enjoy. I know that I wouldn't enjoy somebody who is just a, quote, normal gun user. It's just not, not a thing that I'm ever going to enjoy. Most of my characters are very melee focused because it's how I like to write combat. Um, so when you, so that's where most of my characters end up. Uh, if I'm going to do something that they're going to be in the back line, it's going to have to be something really interesting or I'm just, I'm not going to enjoy that. But there are some people that the idea of a tactical shooter in a, uh, in this type of environment sounds like fun to them. And so that's another thing to consider when you're talking about how you're going to build your character. And again, none of that is based off of numbers. That's still mm -hmm. just that general archetype thing. Yeah. And one of the things I'd like to bring up there, and uh, a lot of people consider archetype and like the build of the character. Like some people are like, oh, I want a tank or I want a DPS character or I want a healer. And those things are all really important things to keep in mind. But there are also archetypes like uh, protective type of people or uh, uh, these kind of go into personality too like a motherly character or a really um, sassy, like, you know, your classic, uh, like your classic character who uh, knows all the right things to say. That's an archetype too. And different types of personalities can be archetypes. Different types of professions can be archetypes. Like um, we've had characters who are doctors and motorcycle riders and inventors, like Leo said, We've had healers and uh, cowboys, and I think we've had a couple soldiers. We've had knights and all kinds of different things. There's lots of different combinations you can do, and you can mix and match things. You don't necessarily have to choose uh, something that kind of all works together. Like, you don't have just because you have, like, for example, maybe a knight archetype with a tank. You don't necessarily also have to have them be stoic to fit that classical idea of what this is this is something you get to choose yourself and you get to do whatever you really want with it there's a lot of freedom and you get to make it special to you but whatever you do you just remember that they are a warrior and there's so many different ways you can do that there's a million different types of person who could choose to train a beacon but at the end of the day you have to remember that they are choosing to come to beacon to train in the art of combat and training to save the world against the grim and they're 
not just um not just your everyday military service they are people who are going out with their own unique goals in becoming a huntress or a huntsman and those are things you really got to keep in mind i think and that actually uh brings us into motivation i think you, you did an amazing transition there so amazing that i now need to stop it in order to mention how a good of a transition that was so all right Rip. let's keep going <laughs> ripperoni <laughs> Motivation. Okay, I'm actually going <laughs> to steal this because this is my favorite thing. Right. Motivation is something that you really absolutely need to have. And when I'm helping someone make a character, I always tell them motivation is the core of the character. If you don't have a motivation, you don't have a character. You just have a muse or an idea or a concept. But once you have a motivation, everything else starts falling into place. And motivation is shaped by backstory and personality. So the formula that I like is that history plus personality equals motivation. And that's something you really, 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 really got to remember. It's super duper important. Um, on the backstory kind of thing, what events happened in their life to make them want to go to Beacon? Like, why wouldn't they want to go to a different school? Like, why wouldn't they want to go to Haven? Or I know Haven is academy why wouldn't they want to go to shade or what whatever the other ones are called I forgot. why wouldn't they want to go to a police academy or why wouldn't they want to go to medical school why would they want to be a huntsman like a frontline fighter who uses their unique skills and talents to kill grim save the world why would they want to do these things above all other options and even when you are a huntsman there are different things you can do some of our characters specialize in um going out and using their own technologies to do a type of thing and with leo making a steampunk character that kind of character would be using his or her technology to come and uh fight the grim or save people in new and unique ways other characters might be healers they want to run into the battlefield where nobody else will and save people in that kind of way other characters might have a uh, vendetta against the Grimm. That's uh, they want to eradicate the Grimm from certain areas, and all of these are different motivations. Going to a huntsman is a going to bleh, going to beacon or a hunt hunting academy is a very complicated thing, and there's so many different ways you can go with it. Which is why motivation is kind of the key thing that will drive not only why your character chose beacon, but also what they want to get out of beacon and what they want to do when they leave. And one of the things Leo brought up is your character is their psyche plus their influences and their actions, which is something that I kind of miss in my formula, which is history plus personality equals motivation. Because history is both the things that happen to you and the people around you that influence you. And your personality also ties into that. So motivation is kind of shaped by who you are and what happens to you. And what happens to you is both the things that are outside of your control, the way you um, interact with the world around you, and even stuff just like the way that the people around you interact. So uh, another topic that I'd like to go into is how the people around your character, um, their influences, their parents, their friends, their family, how they influence their life. Are their Is their family supportive of them? Do they oppose your character's choices? Um, do they say, yeah, go to Beacon, you can do it? Or do they say, don't you even think of that? You're going to get disowned if you try to be a huntsman. And then uh, some characters have resources offered to them by their families. They might have um, training. They might uh, Their parents might know how to fight. Or uh, their cousin might be a medic or something. And it might even be the culture they're around. Uh, different kinds of things can interact with them. They might grow up in an environment where a lot of people train to be warriors or they might have come from somewhere where everyone kind of sticks to themselves and uh, that's a really big thing to keep an eye on because um, people when often they're making characters they don't realize that the characters around your characters those background people have a huge effect and of course um, motivation can also be triggered by backstory and events that happen like if there's a tragedy near tragedies um, near misses that were saved by the bell by someone around them or um, situations that worked out in a way that made them think oh my goodness this is what i want to do with my life and uh, going back to motivation it's all about who they are and what happens to them so their personality are they a determined character who won't let anything get in their way are they a protective character who wants to do whatever they can to prevent bad from happening are they kind of a casual um 
not super involved in anything character and something changes their mind, all kinds of things can happen. And the things that can happen both involve the people around them and how they react to the world they live in. And um, before uh, we move on to the next section, I just a little tip that I like to bring in. Um, well, first of all, we're going to be doing an entire section on motivation probably, which is awesome. I love motivation. But one of the things I always did is sometimes if you're having difficulty finding a motivation, maybe you can start at Beacon and work backwards and see how that thinks. Like, okay, um, I want to make, uh, I'll use my character who I'm working on. I want to make such and such a character with such and such a theme. I want this person, uh, say she has like an initially uh, kind of cocky, selfish personality. What would cause that kind of person to want to go to Beacon? And I think to myself, well, someone would make her change her mind. What would make her change her mind? Oh, perhaps someone saved her from a situation. Um, maybe a huntress rescued her. Well, what would she be rescued from? And well, oh, backstory. Um, maybe she was in a... Maybe she was doing some bad stuff and had to get rescued from that. Why was she doing the bad stuff? And all of these things kind of snowball out and they can do really interesting things. So everyone approaches motivation in a different way. And it's a big, really, really important topic that I can't stress enough. But in the end, motivation comes from who they are and what happened to them. And once you have the motivation, everything else really starts to fall into place. So... We can't stress enough that motivation is really important and we are going to have uh, another section on it, just not right now, because right now we're doing intro stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and the one thing that I kind of wanted to add into that um, is that it, in some ways motivation is one of those really nice places to start even a character from. If you want to, if if you kind of have that core, like I said, inventor or something like that idea, and you're now, well, where do I go from there? I, I, I don't know. Uh, when we're talking about what kind of character do you want to play, their motivation plays a lot into that. Your character's story arc doesn't end when they get to Beacon. In many ways, that's where their, their story arc really begins. Everything else is is prehistory that, that we're writing right now. And the, the, the character that you would see in the, you know, anime or whatever that you would watch that's, you know, Ruby RP is uh, everything that goes forward from there. And their motivations play so much into where how they're going to play from there. And so it's a good place to even begin of like what kind of what kind of story do I want to tell, and that's going to have so much of that that motivation. Um, one of my characters, I really wanted to tell a, a redemption story, and so a big part of his motivation is he wanted redemption. Uh, so that's that, and that was uh, the the pivotal thing that made me immediately start going, figuring out how I was going to do his backstory. Cause I, I needed someone, if I was going to do that, that it made sense that he made some real bad choices in his life and why he would regret those choices. Like I needed both of those things to make sense. And that's can be a hard thing to, to go for, but I now had that core motivation. And again, we have, uh, if you take, Tifa's uh, equation, history plus personality equals motivation, and just like you can uh, do with any other math equation, you can take that apart and work it the other direction of you have their motivation, you have some idea of their personality, that will give you a history to work with. A and same thing if, if you know the kind of history you want to tell and you know their motivation, you will just discover their personality is just a, a thing from there. And what what you get from all of that is the kind of person that you're going to end up actually playing on the day-to-day -day in the RP. And that's part of the reason why we're going to talk about motivation so much, even though it's not a section, quote, section on the character sheet, is because it lets you know not only how you're going to play the character, but personality-wise, what are those characters' strengths and weaknesses? Which is, of course, the next section that we're talking about. Because I cannot, I cannot do transitions without letting you know that we're doing transitions. Um, well, one of the transitions I'd like to say that uh, is that motivation is absolutely a cornerstone to your character. 
And your character can often be motivated to do things that maybe they don't think is possible, but they have these big dreams. And your character's strengths and weaknesses will really play into that because their strengths are what they use to um, tie in with their motivation to kind of achieve their goals. And their weaknesses are things that are uh, keeping them from reaching them. And you can be as motivated as you want, but if you don't have any strengths, you won't get very far. But at the same time, you can be as motivated as you want. And if you don't have any weaknesses, that won't challenge you to get any better. So strengths and weaknesses play into it really closely because um, uh, they kind of drive your character forward. And that's why we're going to talk about it next. Yeah, and a big part of that is, I mean, in some ways, what we're telling are almost superhero stories because everybody at least compared yeah. to us ha in beacon has magical powers i mean if we saw someone doing what these kids are doing we would just that that's magical powers mom um, get the camera right it would be it would be insane uh if you want to empathize with anyone with any character they're especially a strong character their weaknesses are what allow you to do that um, it's the thing that they do in any shonen anime where they show the those things that the main character need to overcome. It's a, it's a common thing in um, in any uh, uh, that that make characters interesting even in in superhero comics is that they all end up showing the blind spots and problems that those characters have their their stuff and a lot of these things are going to come from their backstory and you should definitely like and again it's that whole uh, mobius strip uh rock paper scissors kind of thing rock, where paper, everything scissors. everything kind of feeds into into each other where all of that stuff should feed seamlessly into each other if mm -hmm. if you have it right but um it, uh, thinking about your character's strengths and weaknesses in many ways before you have before you're writing down you know merits and flaws because flaws are where you're gonna where you're then going to uh, make uh, in mechanical terms what some of those weaknesses are. Yeah. One, not every weakness is a flaw. That's uh, uh, just 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 my mod yeah, voice yeah. coming out, making sure that you understand that just because mod you're... voice dun 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 dun. Yes. <laughs> We're not talking about stat flaws right now. Like, we're not talking about, oh, they have a flaw that gives them negative such and such a number to negative such and such a stat. These are character flaws at the core of them. Not necessarily combat, but they can be combat. But these are more so flaws that are part of their character and who they are, not just what happens when you roll a dice. Right. And a good thing for that is then how do they handle some of those weaknesses? In some cases, your character may not even be aware that that is a weakness. It may be such an intrinsic part of their personality that they wouldn't even see it as a weakness. That inventor character, uh, she doesn't like people very much. She's not really a, a people person. Um, she likes uh, she likes gadgets. She likes working on stuff, um, and that and, and so her ability to work with other people in order to get stuff done, she kind of rubs people the wrong way. People don't like working with her. That's a big weakness, but she doesn't see it as a weakness she just sees it as just part of who she is part of mm -hmm. her story arc and we'll get more into that later is to overcome that weakness but the first thing that she would need to learn is that that is a weakness and one of the things i'm still considering is that might be the moment that happens to her that gives her motivation to go to beacon so you see how all of that stuff like can tie into each other um mm -hmm. and your your audience when people read it are going to empathize with those weaknesses very much um and when you and so that's one of the reasons that we require all characters to have a flaw and you should be able to before you put pen to paper think about where your character isn't going to be strong and not as, as Siva said uh, honestly in this case I'm not even necessarily talking about I'm, I'm very much not talking about combat your character might end up being weak to uh, to ranged uh, attacks sure but that's not not a weakness not in the way that we're talking about and uh, a good thing and it ties back into that motivation question is what do they do to overcome some of those and you should have 
at least how your character is dealing with some of their their big flaws um the the inventor character she's not going to be the most physically adept person and she would see that as a, a flaw if now that she's becoming a warrior as opposed to just somebody who sits in a basement and and makes gadgets just for the fun of it uh so she would even recognize that that's a that's a flaw and the way that she's going to overcome that is she's going to well, attempt to invent her way out of it. She's the kind of person that's going to work on... You might be able to hear sirens, everything's fine. Yeah, we can hear a couple. Yeah, yeah um, every, everything's fine, sorry. Like, don't, no, no worries, uh, I am not going to jail. Uh, you'll never get me alive. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, we will, we will. Uh, uh, anyways, the... Uh, um, so she's going to attempt to invent her way out of it and attempt to, like, she's the kind of person, like, she will spend three days inventing a running machine as opposed to just going for a run. <laughs> <laughs> because that's just the way that she thinks about stuff. And thinking about how your character is going to overcome those flaws will, if you haven't worked it out yet, give you that personality or it'll be influenced by that personality. So a lot of these things can be interchangeable about how you get into them, but all of them, when you're done, should form like a symbiotic whole. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, and we didn't talk a lot about strengths there, but uh, it, mostly because we don't off you don't often have a problem defining your character's strengths. You know what they're good at. You know what your your character you know enjoys doing. Um, the, those are the things that we, we've already talked about. The uh, but they're go uh, so, but they should. You should definitely be able to describe those things before you put pen to paper, or in yeah. in, in this case, fingers to keyboard. Uh. But one of the things I'd like to say, and uh, one of the things Leo was kind of uh, pointing at, is something that I really, truly believe is really important. A good weakness is as valuable a good weakness is as valuable to a story as a strength, if not more. And that was something Leo mentioned about how the audience empathizes more with a strong character's weakness than their strengths. And weaknesses are what give your characters the obstacles in your life to overcome. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, going for a run or training yourself or even fighting uh, to uh, train your body. Strengths and we strengths are the things that are great for all of us, but weaknesses are the challenges that we overcome. They are the tests of character, tests of morals, tests of what you believe you can do, and tests of how you interact with people. These weaknesses are challenges that make your character stronger in the end. And that's why they're so important to have really strong flaws and strong things that they don't do right. So they have something to look up to, something to achieve. And a good weakness and a good flaw will be very absolutely pivotal to how they interact with the world and the way they have to get around things, the way they have to fight to overcome. And you'll also notice that in our system, we ask your character to have a core flaw. This is something that they might never be able to shake. Um, for example, this isn't my uh, example character that I'll be using during this series, but I do have a character whose flaw is that she's so protective that she doesn't have the ability to let go. And part of her story arc is to trust people with not only their own burdens, but hers, and understand that no one can really achieve anything unless if we all trust in one another and we allow each other to be vulnerable. And so even though that would be her core flaw, and when we talk about stats, you'll see core flaw can never be removed. Even core flaws can be changed a little bit. And even if it's still pivotal to them, they can evolve through it. So all of these flaws that are in your character, they're not bad things. They're very, very good things and they're great literary tools and they really help your character achieve. And without flaws, you have no progress. So having really good flaws allows your character to evolve and move forward and become something greater than what they already are. And it really drives them in their whole lives. And good flaws are really important. Yeah, they're good stuff. Yeah. Yes, another thing that's really important are the, and these are things that almost won't show up on any character sheets. 
Um, but they are things that you should have answers to. And these are kind of your character's uh, little quirks. Um, some of this Quirk is... Stuff. Yeah, some of this is... <laughs> <laughs> playing against type is a, a thing here. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that because this is one of the things that might show up on a character sheet. Um, and that's like we mentioned a uh, like you want to play a tank character who's who's really protective of people. A quirk on that might be, but they are also a big softy and don't like want to hurt people. Um, so they don't play like the typical, you know, get in your face and and you know mess everybody up kind of guy. Uh, they they maybe they're you know maybe they're a little bit gentle. Um, and I mean you maybe know they love hugs. Yes, maybe maybe they just love hugs, and that's why they grapple everybody. Is they're just love hugs, <laughs> love hugs. Um, but they uh, brawl five. They just love hugs. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Fighting style lover. Um, they. Uh, so you can so those are some quirks, but some of these little quirks are gonna be those minor detail stuff that that help uh, flesh out your character and add a little bit more life to them, just beyond the really rigid. This is what they are. This is what they do. This is what they're bad at. This is what they're good at. When you start thinking of like the quirks and stuff and the little details that make them special, it really helps you go from a really one or maybe even two dimensional just idea and then just make it detailed and really cool and stuff yeah yeah uh so you want to give us some examples of what some of those things might be tifa some of those could be um musical taste political beliefs their sense of humor their hobbies um maybe even romantic interests uh things that are really special to them that really make it um beyond just a normal um but how do i word this you can build your character and start to make their character, but they're just like a lump of clay. And then you can start to form that into your archetype, your backstory, your personality, strengths and weaknesses. And those are all really good things. But every human being, and in this universe, every fondest being too, fondest of people too, have their own special things that make them unique. And things that if you were to see the interactions, like, yep, that's definitely that character. Because we often have things where two characters can have very similar archetypes. Like, uh, I think our group has multiple cowboys, but they're all a little bit different. They all have these things that make them special. Um, other quirks can be just lots of different things that are special. And you'll notice on our uh, our main roleplay site, if you look at it, we have these things called fill-out Fridays. And those are just uh, little things you can add due to add details to your character's life. And we, it is really a good idea to kind of Think of some of these things while you're making your character, but we really do encourage you to kind of look at things that can really flesh them out and just give them a little bit of extra life that makes it fun. And your character will be interacting with other people. It's like, oh, oh, this quirk's coming out. And it's really fun to see those little details just come to life. And yeah, the yeah. things to start thinking up while you're making your character. Yeah, one of the, uh, the word that you used that I love when we talked about this uh, originally was, was head cannons. And a lot of this Cannons. is just that that little thoughts about your character that you might have that again might not even show up in the RP ever. But uh, you know, my first character, his um, uh, sister encouraged him to uh, learn to play the violin, and again, it, it, it's it showed up on his character sheet in that he had the the stats to actually play it, but it literally wasn't even like a part of his backstory it wasn't anything that was in there and it wasn't a thing that like he talked about on a regular basis he you know he's here to be a warrior he's here to be a fighter he, why would he talk about this weird time in his in his life where his sister tried to encourage him to do something that he might think is a little bit silly um but he so that's that kind of like weird headcanon thing and a good thing for that it's like so what kind of music would they like um it, it, you should be able to kind of answer those questions before you start. And uh, Tifa mentioned the fill out Fridays, a good um, kind of idea to go with, especially if you're, you feel like you're having problems filling out this character. Um, <laughs> fill out Friday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yep. It, yep. Uh, yeah. So let, let's, yeah. Okay. The uh, basically, if you, 
uh, can go into a few of those and just try to answer them. You don't have to write them out. Don't don't worry about just that think stuff. about it. Yeah, like, just like can you answer that? And and like in English class, it's like okay, put down your pencil and just think about it. But no, really, it really is a great idea, and it helps you develop a lot of things. Like I hate to interrupt, but I just thought of something that would really good. And one of the things Leo and I were talking about a couple days ago, as we were talking about the character I'm working on, and we were talking about how she'd have this unique relationship with a mentor character in her life. And we uh, were bantering about that, and we decided it would be kind of like a father-daughter relationship, and we think, oh, how would he react if she got a piercing? How would he react if she got a tattoo? And the things we discovered is because it's like a kind of, it's a mentorship relationship and also professional, but also a father-daughter relationship. We decided, oh, if she were to get a tattoo, he'd just laugh at her or something. Or, oh, if she'd get a piercing, he'd be like, ha, I have more piercings than you. And things like that, because it would be kind of like a pirate ship relationship and really interesting situations. So all these little details that kind of flesh out the interactions you have with the character. And those kind of headcans let me think, oh, these characters, although it would be like uh, mentorship, they kind of would have a bit of a father-daughter relationship. And oh, that would affect her personality when the big event happens uh, that would, because she had that relationship with her mentor, uh, that would cause her to have a positive connection and make her feel sad when he goes and things like that. So the headcanons are kind of just like a fun way to think of things. But as you start to develop these details, you go, oh, this is something that I can use in their personality. This would actually have a major influence in their life. And when I was making my first character, one of the things that um, my reviewer asked me, like, oh, how would her family react to that? And at first it was just a headcanon that, oh, they wouldn't really want her to go. But then that developed into so much more. And then that made me think, oh, she probably might not even uh, want to leave her family either. And all these things really develop out. So these quirks and the little head cannons and the little details really help bring some life to these relationships. And if you're stuck on something, you're like, oh, I don't know how the person's relationship with that would be. Just think about day-to-day -day things and what would really influence them in the world of Remnant and things that kind of just bring a little more life to it. And it can really help you with those big things like strengths, weaknesses, personality, and Sometimes if you just start small, it really helps you develop into something more. Speaking of living in the world of Remnant... Speaking uh, of living in the world of Remnant, hmm! <laughs> I wonder if this is a scene transition! No. Uh, Could it be? Remnant is a very colorful world with crazy weapons, uh, advanced technology, a, a very developed system of what's essentially magic. Um, and just big, scary monsters. Um, none of that is subtle. None of that is small. None of that is, um, is beige. Um, does your character feel like somebody who would fit in the show? Um, part of the reason that we're mentioning this right now is because sometimes you have this character idea and you're working on it and you're going really good and then you take a step back from it and you realize you've not been building for the right universe um a character that fits really well in a cthulhu story is basically just not going to fit well in remnant at least not without some changes and so there are times where you need to look at what you're what you're doing, and you need to remember it, it, the way that this is normally described in other RP stuff is remember your setting or remember your audience, and you need to remember your setting, especially here, partially because for a, a couple of reasons, um, and the biggest one that we normally find is because you can probably ramp it up. Uh, a lot of characters. They, they kind of you kind of set the the uh, excitement and you know a little little bit crazy kind of stuff at like two or three. You don't really want to rock the boat, but this is a world where you where you ramp it up to a seven at least, and there are going to be times where your character is going to be ramped up to a ten, and they should feel like a character who can just go all out and just be somebody. Just a, I mean, Nora. Ruby. I have a picture for this. You have a picture for this. Maybe not. You have a great picture for this. Uh, is it a good picture? Or is it a terrible picture? I don't know. Uh, 
Where's the thing? Haha! I didn't do the thing. There it is. Yes! It's it's dust. You know you don't have to explain a lot of the stuff. It should you be You do have to explain some of it, but you're okay if you want to do something wild like uh, I'm going to steal Leo's thunder here. Nora Valkyrie, she has like a hammer that turns into a bigger hammer that shoots like heart-shaped bombs and she can use it to fly and she's also Thor. It's like you can be kind of wild with it. You feel free to be colorful and wild and crazy and Remnant is a world that lets you do a lot of stuff, like, the main character is, like, a little goth girl who loves cookies and carries a puppy in her backpack, but she also wields a giant death scythe, and, but she likes, like, cookies and puppies and things, and she's just a ball of sunshine, but she's also a goth, and you can be really crazy here, it's okay, but remember that the universe is a very colorful one, and, yeah. Yeah, and a good yeah. thing with that is, is kind of choosing and good art style that you're and remember you don't we're not telling you you need to draw your character but um you don't need you, to draw your character yeah but old. kind of picture them in your head like the aesthetic and i'm gonna yeah that's a good word for that that's exactly what aesthetic I'm but you have to put the spaces after every letter so it's not aesthetic it's aesthetic you have yes. to add the spaces or else it doesn't count <laughs> aesthetic um, aesthetic the, with uh, spaces between the lines Yes. Uh, basically, your character is... Um, uh, so where I was going with was you're going to then kind of look at where your your character is going to start from. And we're going to talk more about backstory questions and why it's important to know where your character begins. That's going to be another section. Yeah, but that's a whole other chapter of this. Uh, yes. Uh, and Sections. But you should have an idea of that from all of this other stuff about where it makes sense, uh, kind of based off of the, the world there. And yeah, there are times where it kind of makes sense to go a little bit off topic, maybe. Um, you know, just because your character is, you know, you wanted them to be a military brat doesn't necessarily mean they have to come from Atlas, but... I mean, it it makes sense that they come from Atlas because we know that they have a large military presence where that would make sense for that for, for that to happen. And if they come from Atlas, you find out more stuff about the character because of that. And you, sh the overall thing here is they should feel like a part of that world. If your character showed up in the background of a Ruby episode, would they look? off would they not look like somebody who belonged there somebody would who they look like a really bad just character that was pasted in and weren't supposed to be there yeah. or just well, doesn't make sense well and and not necessarily even a uh, background isn't even quite the right word somebody showing but up they... in one of those big fights because your character isn't just a background character your character is a huntsman in training and they are one of They're the... a full color character. They're not a silhouette character, man. They're not one yeah. of those silhouettes. They're one of the real ones. Yeah. And yeah, some of the back some of the the minor characters in, in Ruby wear a t shirt and jeans. But they don't just wear a t shirt and jeans. That stuff is still stylized. That that is still a choice. Sun doesn't wear a shirt, but that is matters for his character. For who that per for for who he is, and that makes sense for his inspirations and where he's go and where he came from, and so that's it still feels correct, especially then when you bring in his just really cool weapon that I really really like. I just really like. I his like. Weapon. Oh, sorry, <laughs> his weapon's really good. While Leo fangirls about the weapon, I like to bring up. He said uh, stylized, and that's a really good thing to keep in mind. Ruby is a very stylized universe. It has its own character to it. And even though characters can all be wildly different, like we have um, we have uh, Ruby, who is kind of a goth girl. We have, um, uh, we have Sun, who is kind of a suave guy who fights with nunchuck guns. We have... Uh, we have someone like Coco, who's based on a very chic personality, and all of these characters are stylized. They all have their unique uh, personalities and traits, but they're all very ruby, and they have this ruby feel to them, and that's something you gotta try to go for. They have that ruby feel. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I, I'm not done fangirling yet, so maybe you should take the next section. <laughs> okay. Leo is still fangirling over the beat. You should put a, you should put a picture of them in there. I, well, I, you should I, get a gif of 
son with his weapons and get the gif of him doing a <laughs> but yeah when you look at ruby it's like oh man that's so cool that's such a ruby thing and then you should look at your character and be like oh man that's so cool this is such a ruby thing let's do it you should be getting excited over your character and you should see them and for example, a conversation Leo and I had uh, when we were talking about my character who I'm working on, he, um, I'm like, I want to do a pirate, and I don't know how to do a pirate, and he, and Leo pulls up a, you know, he uh, slides a picture across the table from uh, volume four, and he's like, you know, these airships from Maestro, they look like pirate ships, why doesn't she be an airship pirate, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so cool! But that's the whole thing. It is something that could fit in Remnant, and that goes back to the kingdoms. We have uh, Vacuo, we have Vale, we have Atlas, we have Maestro, we have Menagerie. All these characters have these big universes, and there's so much you can do. But you gotta keep it kind of grounded in the Ruby universe, and once you make sure that you are grounded in, you know, stuff that can happen in Ruby, you can just go all out from there. But they should be kind of grounded in the Ruby universe. Like if you just had like literally, I'm gonna I'm gonna trigger the mods with this. If you have just like literally Spider Man walk into a fight, triggered, triggered, kind of triggered. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, don't talk to the mods about Spider Man. They'll cry. Anyways, if you have just like literally, like you know, if you have like literally Yoda with a lightsaber walk into a fight next to Ruby Rose, it's like, that's cool. Why is a Star Wars character next to a Ruby character? You want to make a Ruby character. And it's this big stylized universe that makes you kind of go, oh, wow, that's so Ruby. And that's kind of a feeling you want to get. And there's lots of inspirations to be had. There's all kinds of things you can go with it. There's a million things you can make a character out of. Um... But they all kind of be kind of ruby, and they all have that ruby flair to it. That's a good thing to keep in mind. I'm I'm still fangirling a little bit, but I can move on. Leo's still fangirling. <laughs> I'm going to steal the scene transition. So, hmm, scene transition. I was just talking about inspirations of things to put in the ruby universe. Hmm, I wonder what we should talk about. Let's talk about inspiration. Yes. So I actually made this list a little bit earlier, so I'm just going to start rambling while Leo continues to fangirl about Sun's amazing weapons. Um... I'm also Speaking looking forward of... to hearing your ramble. <laughs> what am I rambling about? Let, let's, oh, I let's, listen... do, let's, let's do the list, and then we can go back and uh, talk just about... fangirl over people for like half an hour, not half an hour. Not, not half an hour, but... we are already a little bit over time. So it's okay, ah, let's, okay. Do the, let's do the list. <laughs> oh boy, you can start with things like a weapon idea, like, hey, I want to have this weapon. Um, it's, uh, it's... It's oh, a staff. It's a staff nunchucks that turn in that that are that are a gun. So it's gunchucks because that's awesome. Yeah, um. <laughs> right. And then a sem or you can start with a semblance idea. It's like okay, okay, I have a character, but what if the character could? Let me use Ruby Rose here. Um, what if the character could like go like super duper fast? Or for Yang, for example, it's like okay, I want a character. The more they get hit, the stronger they are. It's really symbolic and cool. Yeah. Or for um, Weiss, it's like, I want to have a character who can, like, summon a giant knight and it'll, like, fight for her, right? Oh, that's so freaking cool, man. And that's the kind of thing. Um, you can start with the drawing. Like, say if you like to draw and you don't have to draw your character, that's completely optional. But if you do like to draw, it's like, hmm, I drew this. This looks cool. I want to make a character out of this. Um, moving on, you do, like, a character archetype. Like, I want to make a healer. I want to make a knight. I want to make a uh, Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Leo doesn't want a Manic Pixie Dream Girl. I, I'm not playing a Manic Pixie Dream Girl. We already talked about archetype a lot, but you could also do a, a, a color scheme. This isn't one that we see yeah. really often, but if you have, but because of how colorful Ruby is, if you, you can literally start your character with a, uh, just their color scheme that, you know, they, teal and yellow okay well what's you know i really like those colors well, that's kind know. of an electric water thing or like uh, yeah like maybe a beach theme like seeing so that you, you yeah. can go off of that um uh we already uh, an aesthetic style i'm starting with a character that or i'm uh talking about a character that i literally started with just i like steampunk because i'm a big nerd um uh, a, a quote that could seem to embody your character uh, like like a like a mantra or something like uh Never miss a beat with neon. It's like never miss a beat, never miss a beat. Hmm, beat. Hmm, music. Uh, never miss a beat. Boombox. Uh, stuff like that. That could be really cool. Um, 
a fighting style or something, and I'm going to make Leo Fangirl again. Okay, so he fights with nunchucks, but he also fights with guns. What if the guns were nunchucks? And then it just keeps going. Gunchucks! 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 Uh, okay. Leo <laughs> loves gunchucks. Real world inspirations are cool. Um, uh, Say, I want to make a character based off of Napoleon, or I want to make a character based off a of ninja. One of the things I like to, you know, um, party pooper here, take care to make your own character and not just a clone. And make sure that you can take inspiration from something. Like, you can take inspiration from Star Wars. You can take inspiration from a medieval story you like. Or you can take inspiration from a character in another work. And you're like, wow, I really like this archetype. Or I really like this the way this character handles the world. I can do that. But take care not to just make a direct port. And, you know, I'm going to trigger Leo again. Spider-Man. Don't just literally make Spider-Man. Take inspiration. And I'm going to quote our head mod, Blue. You can have like a character based off of chess, but a character might have high tactics and have like a black and white color scheme. But a character that's a port of chess would have like a chess hat on his head and he'd fight with a giant chess club and stuff like that. So make sure to take inspiration, not plagiarize. Yeah, a and good, again, like, she mentioned uh, uh, Yoda before, and you, you don't want to just have Yoda showing up with a lightsaber, but a short character who is who kind of a... Who with an, a glowing sword with, very wi with lots of wisdom, and yeah. maybe they might have a speech impediment. Uh, yeah, a mentor archetype. Like, yeah, you could you could definitely work yeah. something like Very that out. Academic I, one who wants to teach, maybe wants to help, and maybe yeah. would be a good leader, a good team leader, even. Mm -hmm. but, like likes yeah. to spout little witticisms. I would uh, actually go against. Uh, don't don't do a glowing sword. That's the point where you you where you've crossed the line. That's too far. <laughs> that's jump too far. the shark. Yep, that's, I jump the shark. That, that for me is that is that line of like like I yeah, that looks like shark. inspiration. Except now that you have a lightsaber, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'm sorry! And you can even take a character from a different setting or role that you really enjoy. Um, I like, uh, uh, my first character's name, at least, came from another RP that I had done that was based off of the Dragon Riders of Pern. I would suggest not doing that with the names, because we have a naming scheme here. We'll talk more about that later. Um, has to have a color! Yeah, has to have a color, and his <laughs> name did not have a color, because he's a very old character before we had an official document that said that was a thing. Anyways, uh, but I took that character idea, the, the beginning of that character idea, and turned that into a Ruby character. And that meant changing a, a bunch of stuff about him because he was written for a different setting. Uh, see what we had talked mm -hmm. about it before. But you can totally take that stuff. And you can totally take... Uh, a lot of the characters in the canon are based off of... Uh, characters Other from works movies. of art, like yeah, and that's not only like is that fairy tales. Um, uh, Team Juniper is based off of gender flipped uh, myths. M myths of characters Stuff. who who change who pretended to be the other gender at some point. So it's not only just like gender flipped for no reason. It's literally of people who yeah. had dressed up as a different gender before. So it totally fits and is cool that they did that. Uh, yeah, it's a cool nod to something. It's not it's not uh, cloning from them, but it's a cool, you know, nod to the history. It's like, oh, hey, cool, you did that. But for all of Jean's flaws as a character, he is not Joan of Arc. Like, yeah. you, you don't look at him and just go like, yeah, he's just male Joan of Arc. Like, that's just how yeah. you describe him. Like, there's nothing else interesting. Like, no. Like, you might have other problems with him. I personally like him, but he's not a clone of his character. Uh, Ren kind of, is not uh, a clone of Mulan. I was just going to say that. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Ren is not just gender-flipped Mulan. He has his own character and his own uh, things that make him unique. But he did take inspiration from that. And that's an inspiration. Yes. Okay, so you can also start with an animal. Like, if you have a certain animal that really speaks to you, that's really good for Faunus characters, but not every uh, person who starts with an animal has to be a Faunus character. Like, you can have someone based off of a bear, and they're just a real big mama bear, or you can have someone with a wolf, and they're just based on a real papa wolf, or alternately, they could be a big loner. Mm -hmm. And another thing you could do is a plant. Um, we, you might notice a lot of characters named after flowers. That's a pretty cool thing. Um, I, a I mineral. Wonder, oh, sorry. I know. Just, mm, I wonder I why you think that. Uh, I wonder who has a character named off a flower and has <laughs> and has the family name based off the phylogenic family name. Ha <laughs> ha, botany. Um, you could base them <laughs> off of a mineral. Uh, uh, like uh, oh, gold or 
uh, amethyst or um, uh, opal or just there's lots of minerals and they're all really mm -hmm. pretty. I I can't actually off the top of my head think of a character in Ruby based off of a mineral or like mm -hmm. a gem or something. No, normally people take their their names off of gems, uh, garnet, and then they things move. like that. Yeah, and they kind of move on from there. A nice thing, especially if you're kind of stuck for filling out your character, and if especially if you've already considered just like a gem name or something like that. And again, you can totally start with a gem, we just don't have a lot of good examples. But like, uh, mention gold, and so, you know, you're, you, uh, are, your, your character Auror, which you're basing off of the Latin name for gold, and, you know, well, you know, how does he stand up to conflict? Well, well, gold is really malleable. It, it kind of takes shape. So maybe he's the kind of guy that he just kind of adjusts to Goes whatever to situation. Flow. Yeah, he kind of adjusts to the situation there. Now, now you've <laughs> used his name not only for the color name, but to actually describe a part of his personality, which is already like, yeah. hey, plus one cool points. You know, as many cool points as you can get playing a forum RP. Let's continue. None of us are cool. Um, <laughs> Please note that cool, cool points cannot be exchanged for XP points, but we will be like, hey! Yeah, hey. Uh, another thing, uh, folklore and historical features, you can see that even in the main show. Again, take care not to uh, take a clone, just take inspiration. Um, you can take them from an environment. Uh, say you want a really foresty character, you want like a desert character or like a, a snowy character. All of those things are really valid, kind of like Pokemon types. Um, uh, and the poison type. <laughs> I'm a poison type. Oh, no. Um, a culture, um, that's kind of another thing to go with historical figures. Again, don't make a walking stereotype. Take inspiration. And one of the things I was walk, uh, talking to uh, Leo about the other day is for the character I was working on. And uh, she's based off of the Indian peacock for her faunus type. And I'm like, oh, well, what if she had a henna tattoo? Or what if her... Uh, what if she? What if I adapted her fighting style to look kind of uh, like that type of culture's dances? It's like... Uh, all of these things can tie in. So don't make a walking stereotype, but take inspiration and use it to make your own character extra special. Um, other things we can do is an element. I know we have a character based off of the element Argon, which is pretty neato. Um, uh, we have uh, professions that you think could apply to combat, like a doctor or a medic or an inventor, and those kind of fall into archetypes. Another thing that I really like that could be cool, like a signature move, uh, that's just another thing, like, say you don't know what else you want to do, but you just know that you want them to, like, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but I want them to be able to jump in the air, spin around three times, and then shoot back down, and then there's, like, an explosion of color, and that can work on with something like, well, an explosion of color, maybe that's kind of a rainbow character, and what would be a rainbow character? Oh, something to do with light and darkness, where, and then you could think, Oh, light and darkness, what could that be? Like, oh, maybe they grew up in a very restrictive environment and then they broke out of that restrictive environment and started to um, uh, be a little bit rebellious and they started to do creative things and like, oh, restrictive environment. Maybe they were from Atlas. Maybe they were from a military family and they were rebelling against that. So all of these things could really come into play and all of these things could be inspirations for a whole lot of stuff. Well, and that character now, so so because now we've we've developed this character a bit. Their char their their motivation is going to be that freedom. They never ever want to go back to a, a restrictive environment again. And part of the reason that they became a huntsman was because they enjoy the idea of being able to go wherever they want and not have to rely on other people to protect them. They can they can literally yeah. just go from from village to village, and they're going to be a, a welcome sight in that village. And if they ever get bored, they can just leave. And they're so so now you're dealing with someone who's a bit flighty and we've we've now developed this character idea into a simply point. based off of a move and it's like i want them to go with colors and then you just keep going and there you go yeah and now what you should be able to do is be able to say my core character idea is blank blank and that is all before you've now opened up your your character sheet. You're not necessarily going to be able to op uh, answer all of these questions before you. Oh uh, yeah, like these are all suggestions. Yeah, but the point that you want to get to is that the stat process should be more like writing and filling out a sheet of somebody you already know, mm -hmm. a little bit like as if you were statting out Goku from Dragon Ball Z. You, you know who that character is, you've seen them interact, you've seen all that stuff. You might not have quite that much 
you know, knowledge of them, you haven't watched them for that many hours, but you should be able to have an idea of who this character is. And a good point to know that you can start is if you can describe their overall, who they are, not just how they fight and all that stuff, the core of who this character is in about two to three sentences. It shouldn't yeah. take, it shouldn't, it, and we're not looking, again, we're not looking for paragraphs before you've started writing because oh, yeah. that's silly. But my A first, lot of people think they gotta write a ton. You don't gotta yeah, write a ton. My first, Just write what you need. Right. My first character was a warrior for peace. That's his core character concept. He was a person who enjoyed, uh, who didn't enjoy combat for combat's sake, but he wanted to be able to save people. For him, being a huntsman was about saving people, not defeating Grimm. Defeating Grimm was a part of just that's how you save people. He wanted to, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that went into that one. This new character that I'm talking about, she is an inventor, and she is uh, uh, kind of trying to better herself as a person. And the core character idea is someone who... Uh, and this is part of the reason I haven't written anything down yet. I'm still missing a part of who this character is. And the the big thing there that I've, that I've been going for is that she is that inventor thing, but she, she does honestly care about stuff. She's, it, she's an injured person who, who need, uh, um, what's the, uh, crap, the uh, wounded healer. Um, yeah, like she that's, thinks a, that, that's an archetype. Yeah, that is an archetype. She uh, she's gonna have medic, and she's not gonna have it very high when I start, partially because she doesn't she doesn't think that she cares about people. But it's one of those cases of she cares so much that she's distanced herself from people because of how hurt she's been because of stuff in the past. And now I have to come up with those things in the past that hurt her, that turned her into someone oh, who's she wounded. Um, I'm getting a phone call. I'm going to go on mute for a little bit. Okay, well, Leo, I'm gonna... We are actually yeah. about done. I'll just wrap it up. We are about done. Okay, this okay. was fantastic, guys. I gotta go. I'm getting a phone call. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later, Tifa. Um, so that's where you're going to... So now that I've described, you know, she's a wounded healer who uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't want to be around people... Uh, when she starts, because she uh, because she's been hurt so much, and now I have to kind of work out how that's going to work. And you see how that's not even about her being an inventor. Um, that didn't had nothing to do with any of that stuff. You could be a wounded healer without any of those, um, without being an inventor. That's not the character archetype and who the core and what the core of the character is should be synergistic, but they are not necessarily the same thing. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of the point that you want to get to, and you see how even I'm still not a hundred percent close with my character. And the thing that got me much closer was talking about her here, talking about her with Tifa before. Um, and I know that Tifa uh, completely ditched parts of her uh, old backstory because of our talk there. We encourage you when you're at this per point in character creation, talk to the mods, talk to the community. They, we all are here because we love characters, and we will love helping you make a character that you enjoy. I came back. She came back. Well, so Sir Leo and Tifa signing off. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, Rip. We'll. Uh, We'll get this uh, up and on the sub uh, within the next couple of days, and we'll get this to, um, and we'll start talking about what we'll do when Tifa comes back from her vacation. I might take one of the uh, larger subjects that I wanted to talk to with a group. Um, if you are interested in helping out with any of these, contact either me or Tifa, and we'll uh, see what we can do. Um, until then, yeah. uh, ha ha happy huntsmaning. Um, Happy huntsmaning! <laughs> and uh, we'll sign off because we can't do that not uh, awkwardly at all. Bye bye! Awkward bye!